Warning, watching this episode could cause abdominal cramping, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. Oh, hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Will. Welcome to episode five of Real Robots, where we continue on with our drink dispensing droid. This episode, we're gonna add a computer and a touchscreen to the back of the robot and maybe some twinkly LEDs. Ooh, see in a few seconds. Hey everybody, welcome back. Let's talk a little bit about the computer that I chose for this robot. So I, I wanted to try something really small. This is the SBC, which is single bore computer. It's called the Latte Panda. And this particular version is the original, which is uh, four gigabytes of RAM. It has a quad core Intel Atom processor. So hopefully this will be fast enough to be able to run our robot. We got a lot of accesses. I think there's 24 total. So hopefully we get enough power from this. So we're gonna find out together. This also has an onboard Arduino and we're gonna use that to communicate through a serial line to our EZB. The EZB is the controller that we have already installed inside the robot that controls all the actuators. Okay, let's also take a look at the touchscreen. The touchscreen is a 10 inch touchscreen and it's made by uh, Sun Founders. I think it's 1280 by 800 resolution and it just simply connects to the Latte Panda with an HDMI cord. I'm also going to add some LEDs to the front chest so the light will spin around when the liquid's coming out of the uh, silicone tube and we're also going to um, have a couple other little places where we've got some uh, LEDs. We're going to use the uh, Pro Trinket which comes from Adafruit. Uh, those will be the controllers that controls the NeoPixel LEDs. So the first thing I'm gonna do is load some code up to the Arduino. We're gonna use uh, the Arduino IDE, and then we'll connect some wires to that. And that will connect directly to the UART port on the EZB, and we'll have uh, solid communication back and forth between the computer and the controller. So here I've made a little jumper cable. I'm gonna just simply put that into the UART port, which is also the camera port. If we take a closer look on the Latte Panda, I have an the RX and the TX pin, and also a ground. Got it coming out, coming down. The RX and the TX are switched, and then we have the ground connected. This will connect to the onboard Arduino and act as a communication between the EZB and the Latte Panda. This is the driver board for the touchscreen, and it's pretty simple to set up, but we have a uh, five volts that will allow us to connect directly to Latte Panda so that was going to power the Latte Panda for us. And then all we have to do is connect the HDMI from the HDMI on the driver board to the HDMI on the Latte Panda. Next thing to do is take the USB connection from the touchscreen and plug it into the Latte Panda. It comes with a already pre-installed Arduino IDE. We're gonna start that, then we're gonna download EZB Pass-Through. The link is in the description below. This sketch will allow us to use the onboard Arduino as communication back and forth between the EZB and the Latte Panda. It's the Arduino Leonardo that's on board, so you wanna make sure that's selected. And then the port will already be established as COM5, so select COM5 and then we're gonna upload that sketch to the Arduino. Make sure you're connected to the ECB via Wi-Fi. Type in the IP address in the advanced settings. The first thing you see is the communication type. We're gonna change that. We wanna change the baud rate to 256,000. Once we're done, we wanna select save and reboot. Next, download Arc by Synthium. Arc is the software which I use to control all of the motors on board the robot. Make a couple of adjustments to the connection settings. Choose settings, then enable DTR. Then choose 256K baud, save and close. Now that we have everything set up, we can test a single servo to see if we can get it to move. If we can, then we know we've set everything up correctly. It's time now to finish off the back frame that we're gonna house the computer and the touch screen into. If 
finally I'm going to join the frame together with a 3D printed hinge. Now that that's done, I added some magnets so that the two frames will snap together. Now that we're finished with the back frame, we're going to take the computer and the touchscreen, mount them on the inside, and then we'll be able to mount this into the back of the robot. Let's get to it. As I stated earlier in the video, I chose an Adafruit Pro Trinket, which is a Arduino clone to control the LEDs. And each one will be uploaded with its own sketch. I like using NeoPixels for my LEDs. I chose the Adafruit NeoPixel LED strip, and then I can cut them into uh, any length that I want. And then I also use their LED rings. Programming LEDs is not necessarily intuitive with just writing code, so I found this excellent website that allows you to create your own LED sequences, save those out as Arduino code. You can control frames per second, how many frames are in the sequence, and how many pixels that you have. Or if you want, you can just simply pick from 21 pages that they have of LED animations. When you're finished with your animation, Simply export as Arduino code. Just as a note, if you're using any of the Adafruit boards, make sure that you include the Adafruit board index, which comes from their website. And you can add it into the additional boards manager URL. After you install the library, you should be able to see all the boards listed. Now upload the sketch that we downloaded from the website. We're going to change two things. We're going to change the pen and the length. The pen will be the signal wire and the length will be how many LEDs we have in the sequence.
Oh my goodness, Will has done it. This latte panda is small but mighty. Hey, I have to be honest with you, I had no idea whether this was going to work or not. The uh, latte panda I didn't really test out before I started the project. So I'm actually really pleased with uh, the amount of power that it has. If you're looking for a, a small form factor uh, computer to put inside your robot, I certainly highly recommend it. So I think that's going to do it for this episode. Join me on the next one where we're going to start painting the robot, put a little weathering on it, make him look like he's out of the Star Wars universe. So that should be fun. Make sure you don't miss that one. See you next time.